American scientist Colin Wright was recently kicked out of the National Institutes for Health public discussion on sex and gender. Why? Because he dared to ask questions critical to the woke pseudoscience that says there are more than two sexes. Wright's now pursuing his legal options for being canceled out of participating in the state-funded public discussion. And he joins me today to talk about it. Drea Humphrey here with Rebel News, and I'm starting to think that hell hath no fury like those within woke academia who were triggered by someone articulately challenging their ideological belief that says there are more than two sexes. At Rebel News, we've covered many examples of this, like former Chilliwack, B.C. school district and Ph.D. Dr. Daryl Ferguson getting banned from the censorious district school board meetings after asking such questions. Or like the judges who threw gag order after gag order at the B.C. father who was eventually in prison after asking such questions or speaking out about how the heck his child became suddenly gender dysphoric and rushed into medical transitioning. Including, by the way, a gag order that prevented him from misgendering his child for a certain time or else it would be deemed criminal violence. It's unjust, isn't it? But our friends in the United States, well, they have more secure constitutional rights than us, at least for now. And that's why when I read in a recent post-millennial article, Colin Wright, an acclaimed evolutionary biologist and the founding editor at The Real Last Stand, was looking into his legal options after being kicked out of a federally funded symposium called Exploring the Many Dimensions of Sex and Gender in the Genomics Era, I thought you'd be interested in his cancel story. The discussion was put on by the National Institutes of Health and National Human Genome Research Institute on July 17th. And here's Wright to talk about it. Colin Wright, thank you for being on Rebel News. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Now you're an evolutionary biologist, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. That sounds exactly like the type of bright mind that should have been welcome in this public meeting. But before we get to that, tell us a little bit more about what that means. What's your experience and the type of work you've done? So I'm an evolutionary biologist, as you established. Uh, I work for the Manhattan Institute. I do a lot of work on the policy of sex and gender uh, in law. So at the Manhattan Institute, we're interested in sort of clarifying policy and I'm clarifying biology for policymakers. Uh, this is this is what I do. This is my profession. I write expert testimony for court cases uh, when states implement laws defining the biology of sex uh, because they inevitably get sued from places like the ACLU. So this symposium was set up as a uh, as this sort of meeting of the minds from people from all different sort of professional backgrounds where they would come and they would discuss the intersection of sex and gender and uh, genomics and for clarifying, it is specifically said for clarifying policy uh, scientists and the general public. And so I thought, well, this is a great place for me to go because this is exactly what I do. And it's a public event funded by the NIH, uh, federally funded uh, organization. Um, and to make a long story short, which we can go into more, I began attending. I started asking a few questions that were directly related to the uh, questions or the, the things that the speakers were bringing up, uh, and I was kicked out. They told me I was being disruptive uh, for just asking very specific questions about the biology of sex. Wow. Now, as a journalist who asks questions that some don't want to be asked, I can relate to you, but this is just something we see happen so often. You mentioned your expertise. You're qualified to be there. Uh, Tell us a little bit about the types of questions that triggered them so much. What were you asking? Yeah, so some of the people uh, were just making claims about, you know, sex being a spectrum or this non-binary entity existing on a continuum or at multiple levels. Uh, and so I was just asking them very specifically questions about how they view the biology of sex, you know, pointing out if they said that sex was a spectrum, I would say that, you know, well, the fact that we define sex as related to the two different types of gametes, sperm or ova, that individuals create. Uh, this means that the number of sexes is limited to two. Uh, so I was just pointing out things like this. They would try to say that sex uh, is can be defined in many different ways uh, based on hormones or chromosomes and things like that. And uh, I just tried to 
ground it in natural science and say that actually this there's only one unifying uh, thing that all males have. The thing that unifies me is a you know a human male with any plant that is a male with a bird that is a male with a worm that is a male. We don't have a lot of in common uh, in terms of our morphology and our hormones and our behavior, but we all share one thing, and that's we all create small gametes or sperm. And this is the unifying principle of what it means to be male or female uh, in, in, in nature. Wow. So it was too much science uh, to explore there in the discussion, I'm guessing. Now, you were kicked out temporarily and then invited back in and then kicked out again. What happened there? So I'm not sure what happened the first time. So I got kicked out of the symposium before I even asked any question whatsoever. I was just quietly waiting. Um, and my colleague, uh, Thomas Bogardas, who's a professor, uh, a philosophy professor at Pepperdine University, he got kicked out around the same time after he asked a question. So I don't know if they just started kicking people out or if they knew that I was attending beforehand because I sort of wrote an article that I was going to be attending this uh, this symposium. So they may have been on the lookout, but it's, it's hard to tell. I did reach out and ask them why I was kicked out. They claimed they didn't know. And then I was miraculously let back in, uh, only to then be permanently kicked out shortly thereafter, after I was asking some very specific and very polite and professional questions too. No, nothing was nagging, nothing was antagonizing, I wasn't harassing anyone. I was literally just asking very straightforward questions about the biology of sex because I thought, honestly, that they were promoting pseudoscientific notions of, of biology. And again, this was a public event, it was government funded, you're left kicked out not once but twice, and you're left with your thoughts about that, and I know you've communicated you feel this is a breach on your rights and you're going to do something about that. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so because this was uh, an NIH, National Institutes of Health, event, uh, I was quite shocked that I was kicked out of this, especially after I then contacted them a second time and they said that I had violated their, uh, their code of conduct, which uh, prohibits uh, harassment um, and not engaging in a professional manner. And I was making sure I was abiding by all of those rules. I was I'm always very professional and just asking very specific questions. Um, and so I, I do think in this instance, given that it was a federally funded organization hosting a public event that anyone could register for, uh, and I was kicked out of this event. Um, and there's a few people who probably needed to attend that event more than me, given my I exist at that intersection of science and policy and sex and gender. Uh, you know, I, I just think this is a very clear violation of my First Amendment uh, to, to uh, you know, attend a, a public federally funded event like this. So I'm, I'm going to be pursuing uh, some legal counsel to see if, if this is a viable case. And I, I think it will be. I've, I've had some people reach out to me already uh, from several organizations, which I won't mention right now, but they think that it's a pretty open and shut case. So hopefully we'll see. Well, do keep us in the loop so we can keep our viewers up to speed on that situation. But I want to ask you while I have you, I imagine this isn't the first time you've been canceled in some way, shape or form. Uh, being a biologist who dares to talk about biology when it comes to sex, what are some of the other things you've gone through? Oh my! Uh, so I mean, I've, this is my genesis was rooted in cancellation uh, in around 2018 when I first started writing about this topic. Uh, I had ended up leaving academia in 2020 because the campaign to get me uh, kicked out of, of academia was uh, so intense and uh, so so long and, and and fervent that it just became unbearable to to try to exist in that in that field. And I feel like they really did destroy my reputation there. Uh, so yeah, at, at every point along, it's been it's been a, a rough ride. It's actually gotten strangely better now that I have a bigger platform and I'm working at uh, you know think tanks doing this type of stuff because they can't really cancel me now, which really shows their mindset. Because when I was at the most vulnerable, when I was a postdoc and I was untenured, that's when they swarmed the hardest because they know that's how they can get people to shut up if they don't like them talking about uh, these types of issues, if they expose uh, sort of the lies that they're saying. So. Yeah, it's it's been it's been a while, but I've been doing it for six years and uh, not about to stop anytime soon. Well, we're seeing a different definite change in Canada and the U.S. where I would say the silent majority is a little bit more comfortable speaking or even sharing some common sense commentary about there being only two sexes. Are you noticing that in the scientific community? Have you seen any changes there? 
You know, I can't say I've seen a lot of movement within the scientific community. They're still very much hush-hush uh, about it because, you know, the people, the few biologists who have talked about it, we have to get by, as I mentioned, in think tanks or having blogs that we run, having podcasts, because it is just such a, a hectic thing to talk about. I don't think there's been a whole lot of change within the sciences, but I do think we're seeing the change in sort of the, the public, really. More and more people are being willing to speak up with this. Well, there you have it, Colin Wright, and we have more information on how you can keep up with the latest that he's been working on in our written article, which you can find in the description box below. Thanks for being on Rebel News. Hey, thank you for having me. In a statement to Rebel News, the National Institutes of Health confirmed that at least three people were booted out of the symposium due to moderators who were asked by the agency to ensure a professional environment that was safe, collaborative, and productive for all attendees was maintained during the Q&A. The federally funded agency alleges those canceled from the event were being disruptive by repeatedly posting questions unrelated to the session's topics, and that in doing so, they clearly violated the event's code of conduct. Quite a different story than that of what Mr. Wright has shared in this report. Let us know in the comments which one you believe. At Rebel News, we've had many cancel stories of our own including Google preventing us from having any ad revenue on the important news that we bring you. So if you appreciate the work that we do bring you, then perhaps consider being a part of what makes it possible in a very fun way, shopping. Head to rebelnewsstore.com and check out all of our merchandise, including this cute Assume My Gender shirt. And when you do, you can save while you shop using coupon code DREA10. We appreciate your support.